Saturday afternoon. Tomorrow I'm doing a show on backyard chickens and rodent control and beekeeping. And you've seen some bee videos and we're gonna talk a lot about rats tomorrow, but I wanted to show you our chicken coop. So here we go. The coop is actually three things. One is the coop proper. That's the box where the chickens sleep every night. Then there's this fenced in area that we call the run. That allows them freedom to move while still being protected. And then there's this whole area here, which is their yard. This is the chicken yard. The girls love the mulch because they go digging down in it. It holds moisture to the ground, which draws worms up. And uh, for them, every morning is uh, a special feast. You might have noticed that I have a few wires running across the large open part of the yard. The reason is that that telephone pole way over yonder is a favorite roosting spot for a couple of local red hawks. And uh, red hawks love to swoop down and grab chickens if they can, but they never have tried. And the reason is that hawks need a glide path and they always calculate whether they can fit through a thing with their wings spread wide open. So you don't have to fully cover over a chicken run in order to protect it from flying predators. All you have to do is put a few tricky things in their way and they get discouraged and they give up. <laughs> this is Pearl. She's super soft. She's our big girl. Aren't you? Aren't you? Pearl. Pearl, talk to me. Pearl. Are you mad at me? Pearl. Lucy's the golden and brown one right here. Lucy is one of our Easter eggers. That means she lays blue-green eggs. And uh, this is Poppy, my personal buddy. Hey, Pop. What's up? That's Beatrice. She's a buff Orpington. This is Reba, our redhead. She's a Rhode Island red. She's getting broody. Yeah, she is getting broody, huh? And that is Pepper. What is Pepper? Oh, she's a barred rock. She's a Plymouth barred rock, that's right. This is Marilyn. She's a uh, silver-laced Wyandotte, and uh, she's probably our prettiest chicken, I think, overall. Yeah, I so we named her Marilyn after Marilyn Monroe from Star of the Silver Screen. What? 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 I'm sorry. We designed this little feed shoot device that holds almost a whole bag so that we don't have to come out here and mess with the food very often. So it's just made out of landscape PVC. And once a month or so, we fill it up. This is a $35 five gallon igloo cooler. Holds lots of water, at least a couple of weeks worth of water for them, usually, and keeps it cool during the summer and keeps it from freezing during the winter. That we took the spout off and retrofit with a couple of PVC elbows and then a nice vinyl tube that goes down. Those are uh, little watering nipples for the girls. They just come along and drink to their heart's content. You would think that it would take a while to train them to do that. The chickens have a thing for the color red, and so literally the very first day I hung this, they were in here bumping it with their beaks, and as soon as they realized that water came out, that was game over. Hey, that goes in the coop, girl. Let's put it here. Watch. Here. You can do it. Yeah, put it in there. Good job. I could not be happier that this little one is growing up around these animals. They, on the other hand, could be happier, but um, we don't always give her the rake. Boop is in the coop. You are covered in uh, yes, stuff. Yes, and diatomaceous earth. There she goes. There she goes. <laughs> is that their food? Watch your head. Low ceiling. <laughs> this is the coop. Oh, I know. These bars right here are where they sleep at night. They roost on these little bars. This coop can hold up to 10 chickens comfortably. We have seven right now. And right beyond the bars are the nest boxes. Chickens do not claim independent nests. They are happy to share uh, nest spaces just for the sake of laying eggs. I guess that happens when you lay an egg every day or so. 
So the nest boxes are stuck off to the side of the coop so that they don't actually spend time roosting in there and sleeping on there and uh, pooping on their eggs. So, uh, and there's another reason why the nest box is off to the side, and I'll show you why. When we're not dealing with chickens and we just want eggs, then uh, we just walk out here onto the deck and we flip open the top of the nest box and look! Eggs! Four, five, seven eggs. Everybody laid today. See that green one right there? That is uh, Lucy's. So we just steal these eggs and uh, run away and the girls don't mind at all because it just leaves room for more tomorrow. Why are these chickens so interested in me right now? It's because they're my friends? Yes, but there's another reason. It's because I am holding what is the equivalent of crack cocaine for chickens. That is mealworms, dried mealworms. These are like potato chips to chickens. Uh, they can never have just one. Right, ladies? How do you get chickens to flock around a toddler that they're normally afraid of? You do this. Mealworms. Mealworms, everybody. Let me show you what happens when you want to pet a mature chicken. Hey, pop star. See that? This is the crouch and submit position that she would actually yield up to a rooster. It's not just me that it happens to. Hi, Ella. Yeah, you know Poppy. Uh, it's not just me. It's actually Tina, any adult, any grown-up who comes in here, they submit to because we know. Yeah, but she doesn't do it for Ella because uh, they are mortal enemies. Sometimes people very wrongly assume that chickens are a noisy thing or if you're going to have chickens in a neighborhood a suburban neighborhood like this one it's going to be a noise problem for the neighbors the reality is chickens are quieter than most songbirds that are sitting up in trees uh, it is the case with ours as well what's noisy are roosters roosters don't just go off at dusk and dawn they go off any time during the night and they are incredibly noisy but we don't need roosters to have chickens and to have eggs every day and we don't have roosters because roosters are also kind of jerks chickens have amazing circadian clocks they also have really poor night vision so guess what getting all of these crazy gals into this nest box coop area at night is not a difficult thing to do in fact uh, we don't have to do anything. They put themselves to bed when the sun starts to go down. I kid you not. In about an hour and 15 minutes, all of these girls will be inside the run. And about a half an hour after that, they will all be up the ramp, sitting on their roosts for the night. All we have to do is come out here, unclip this, and close the door to the run. And the reason for that is not to keep them in, but to keep raccoons and rats out of their feed. This is the cook door. We actually never close this except on the absolute coldest, craziest of uh, temperature nights. Otherwise, we leave that open. And then we designed this coop with lots of venting at the top. And these vent flaps close down when necessary during rainstorms and when it gets super cold. Otherwise, there's a lot of good circulation where warm air rises and escapes out of the vents. And there's cross ventilation. There's some on the other side, too up through the main hole, and then there's a window on the other side here. A lot of chicken runs come much shorter than this one that we built, and there's nothing wrong with that at all. The chickens don't need all this height in there. But the reason we built ours taller is so that we could get inside it easier without banging our head all the time and uh, get it cleaned out regularly. So the more accessible you make your chicken coop and run for you as a human being, the more you'll clean it and the cleaner it will stay. This is another component of what the girls eat, which is pretty amazing. These are the shells of their eggs ground up in the food processor. And uh, we actually feed them back to them again because uh, there is no better calcium supplement that you can give your chickens than the shells of their own eggs. Very little goes to waste by way of food when these girls are around. Every single one of our table scraps virtually come out here and end up in the chicken yard. Their own eggs come back in the chicken yard. When we weed the garden, if we ever decide to weed the garden, the weeds end up in here. And so literally almost everything that grows here on our piece of property ends up inside these chickens and comes out in the form of eggs and ends up inside of us. And uh, we like that little circle.
So how's this whole experiment been so far? Oh, I love it. I love yeah. our girls. It's very fun. So that is the uh, Sharp family chicken coop. Occasionally we get lucky, we can catch a girl in the act of laying. Well, hello, Reba. What? How's it going in here? How's it all coming out? Good? She's all puffed up. She's also quite upset at me right now. So, uh, okay. Uh, we'll give you your privacy. Look at those. That, my friends, is breakfast. So these are hollow. These are from way back. There it is. Reba, she was number one. November 22nd, 2016. Check this out though. This is how young she was. Look how little that thing is compared to all the eggs now. Oh, they grow up so fast. We keep our eggs in this basket on our kitchen counter, not in the refrigerator. The reason is that a chicken naturally puts a coating on the outside of an eggshell that seals it airtight and will allow it to sit out at room temperature for days and days and days without starting to go bad. Now, the USDA requires factory chicken eggs to be scrubbed to the point where that protective coating is gone, and that's why you have to refrigerate store-bought eggs. But not eggs from your backyard. Not if you keep your coop clean and your chickens clean and you give these a little dousing in warm, soapy water. Then you can have your eggs as nature intended. So I hope you enjoyed our little whirlwind tour of our chicken coop and our chicken run. We've been doing it about uh, a year and a half now? Yeah, about a year, about a year and a half. And uh, it's been a lot of fun. We love it. And so if you are on the fence about it, hopefully this inspired you and maybe you're gonna commit and add a little bit of uh, farm life to your life in your own suburban backyard or urban backyard, whatever works. Chickens are really, really easy to deal with. You just educate yourself, you commit to them, just like you commit to any serious project, and uh, massive rewards, including eggs, 